Hi, Not Board Gamers, and welcome back to Not Board Gaming. I'm your host, I'm Mark. Now, on today's very, very, very special episode, uh, I'm once again talking with my, my very good friend, and I think we're going to be on each other's Christmas cards list, Mr. Adam Kwapinski. <laughs> Hi, Adam. Yeah, hello, everybody. Hey, Mark. <laughs> so, for those of you that don't know, and, and where have you been? You must have been living under a rock. Adam is obviously the designer behind Nemesis and Nemesis Lockdown and Hard City, uh, but we're here today for a very, very, very special playthrough and that is the upcoming kickstarter for frostpunk by glass cannon studios uh, and the game is based on the pc game of the same name and adam is the designer behind frostpunk so adam how excited are you about this project uh you know it's uh, it's a long uh, long walk uh, for us to uh, to make it happen it's uh, i think close to two years now uh, when we start this uh, this project uh so yeah i'm very excited a little scared like always because kickstarter is uh, uh is always very uh, very exciting and uh you know uh we we hope that people like the game like what we uh, do here uh and we'll see how it works for now community uh, have uh, you know uh quite a big uh, expectation because of how good the video game was and uh, uh, truly it it wasn't easy to uh, to make it uh, on the board uh, because uh, uh, because the game is quite big when we talk about video game uh, it has uh, uh, lots of uh, small mechanism uh, and of course uh, uh, we don't have a computer to calculate everything, yeah, so uh, it was between, uh, you know, simplifying it, but still giving people a uh, full feel, full uh, uh, spirit of the original game. So this is w what was uh, uh, our goal when, when uh, we work on that, on that game. And I must say, uh, Adam's just spent the last hour or so teaching me uh, the game. I will forget loads of rules, and it does play a lot like the uh, like the PC game in the video game. So I'm really excited to show you how this works. Now, a few things to mention is this is a short scenario. So this is an introductory scenario. So there are certain things that aren't in the full game, like there are only access to six laws here as opposed to eight laws, and certain other actions which you will then get as you play the full game. If you want to see a full playthrough, then go and check out Jesse's uh, on a Quackalope video on Frostpunk where I think there's a four or five hour playthrough there of that yeah, no, yeah. Uh, so this you is an interesting see everything there and even more <laughs> and I've watched not all of it I've watched a lot of that and uh, and yeah the game gets really intense um, so yeah this is a, I say this is a, a special short scenario introductory scenario uh, so this should give you a good feel on how the game works the artwork on the game in, in tabletop simulator is still of course work in progress uh, and this will continue the progress will continue as the game progresses through the Kickstarter, which launches, as I say, on the 6th of October. So um, I'm doing this on Tabletop Simulator. I will apologise. My Tabletop Simulator skills are a little bit lacking, so Adam may well step in and just help me out on a few areas as well. Uh, and I apologise for maybe some wonky camera angles on that. And because I've not really done this kind of uh, broadcasting before as well, I can't show you our faces as well as the tabletop simulator face, so I will just cut to the game and it will be lots of the gameplay without my face there, which is probably a very, very good thing. But you will hear Adam and I in the background there as well. So I think that's it. Is there anything else you want to mention, Adam, before we go into the game? Uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's all. There is uh, one uh, one more important part that uh, we cannot show on uh, tabletop simulator, and this is the uh, generator. The generator. Tower. We have some, uh, you know, mock-up mechanism uh, here to uh, uh, imitate the or original uh, idea. So in the physical game, there will be. Uh, plastic generator tower that works uh, similar to Shogun or Amerigo tower. Yeah, so you put something in there and something falls out. Uh, and we use some, uh, some dice here to, uh, uh, to mock up uh, this mechanism. 
So yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit more as we get into the game, and you'll see what's happening there. But um, if you've looked online, we've seen on fake Facebook, and you've seen uh, Jakob Wisniewski. I don't if that right yeah. how pronounce pronounce the name. He's 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 got some three D models there of the uh, of the generator, and they look fantastic. So. Let's jump over to the game in, uh, in Tabletop Simulator and uh, let's go through this introductory game. It should take around about an hour, but give or take, knowing A, I could die very, very quickly because I'm terrible at these kind of games, and B, it could actually take longer than that because I'm also you know, quite terrible at using Tabletop Simulator. Anyway, let's dive into the game. Okay, so... Um, the game takes place over a number of rounds, and basically, I think a quick overview, Adam, is to kind of, um, uh, I suppose, uh, survive. Basically, that's that's the aim of the game, isn't it? There, what we have to do is we have to make sure that our um, our, our kind of band of survivors that have found this new place uh, are heated, and that's the big generator. There, we have to collect resources, we have to build buildings, build shelters, stop people getting sick pass some laws, feed the generator, maintain the generator, and survive until a predetermined point in the game. Would you say that's fair, Adam? Yeah, easy, <laughs> easy job. Uh, you yeah. know, I, I like to say that uh, your only job here is to survive. So uh, it's not a big deal, yeah? No, no, of course not, no. Uh, and if we go over here, I'll show you this here. This is the, oops, uh, this is the kind of phase, various phases there. Now, there seems to be a lot of, fa a lot of actions here, but... As you play through, you'll see that they flow very, very well together. And in phase one, we start around at the action phase as well, as you can see where the action phase is, just down the halfway part of the card. And that's where we're going to go from here. OK. And this first action phase says, place citizen meeples on use citizens tokens and take actions, basically. So yeah. if we go up you here. Don't have, uh, you don't have any uh, use citizens tokens no. uh, because uh, everybody is uh, quite good now. Uh, <laughs> so they are ready to work. So the card, each scenario comes with some starting resources and, and workers. And as you can see down here, it's got my various tokens that are predetermined on the board. So I have. Um, I have some ch uh, child workers, and I've got one meeple there. Uh, I have two meeples for engineers, and I have four meeples for my workers. So these numbers don't represent the number of meeples. It's these figures above here. Wherever that is on there, that's how many meeples you've got. So I have exactly four, six, uh, s uh, yeah, four, six, eight meeples uh, at the top here. But I've only got access to the uh, the engineers and the workers. We can't use the child meeples yet because we have to pass a certain law. So I think for my first action, I'm going to take a worker meeple and I'm going to place it into this build action here, which then allows me to build some buildings. And if you look over here, we can see there are various buildings uh, that we can build. And each of these buildings costs the resources that are limited down at the bottom. So let's have a look. I'm trying to think what I did. And I first thing I'm going to do, I think, is build a gathering post, which is this one here. So I'm going to take that gathering Always post. Always a good idea. <laughs> I'm going to take that gathering post and I'm going to place that just there. One sec. There we go. Place that just there. And that has cost me one wooden resource. So I take one wood and I move that to the side. I've still got two further build actions at the moment. Um, so let's have a look. We've got gathering post, tent. I think the other thing I'm going to do is potentially take a sawmill right now. So I'll take this sawmill and I'm going to place that on here, which allows me then for an action to get rid of one tree if I place a worker on there and get three wood from that. So I'm already building my resources, but that cost me two wooden resources. There we go. One, two. That's those done there. For my third build action, I have no resources left to build. So I'm only performing two on this go, aren't I, Adam? That's correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. excellent. So now, maybe I want to gather some more resources. So I'm going to take this worker meeple, and I'm going to place him over here on the sawmill. We're going to discard a tree. And I'll just put that up there. And that means, if you look at that action there, for it, when I place a worker meeple, if I discard a tree, I get three wood back into my resources. So here we go, take those three wood, put them back into my yeah, resources. But what you, what you have to do, uh, or 
probably wants to do before is to it's start heat. to generate. Ah, uh, I did this last time. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Okay. So imagine I hadn't carried that work out just yet. What I need to do is start my generator. <laughs> exactly. And you can spend coal at any time, can't you? So, the, so uh, yes. Before any action, you can spend, spend your coal, coal, and this is free. So uh, there we go. So by spending that coal, what I can do is I can take this particular, um, which is, what is that called? That is the um, uh, heat token. This heat is token. your heat token or heat level token. Yeah. And I place that on there. And what that means is that if you look at that icon on that disk, that means that all of the buildings in this particular area are heated at this stage. That's correct, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And also because you, uh, this icon shows up, all red buildings uh, are heated. red buildings are heated, no matter where, where they are. Yeah. So this is not enough. <laughs> no. So I need to spend one more coal, then, basically. Can, can you spend more than one coal on an action? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's up to you how many coal you, you want to spend. Because you just need that coal. <laughs> yeah. So if I was to spend another coal, that would then move that heat token then up to there. Which means that all of these buildings, uh, let me get this right, yeah, all of these buildings here are heated now in this room, yeah? So they are heated. Yeah, and also all orange buildings. All orange buildings as well. Are. Yep. Oh, yes. So release that. So that means that is now a, a heated action, and that does, I don't get sick from that now. If, I, if I'd have done that before I performed the action, um, my worker wouldn't have got sick doing that. Yes, exactly. there we go. So, yep, I played it a little bit out of sequence there, but you can see what happens. Right, okay. So I've still got four actions left. Um, I'm trying to think. So I've got three wood now. Let's have a look. I could build again. So alt 10. I think I'm going to build uh, a tent. So I'm going to put my worker on there. I'm going to spend two to build a tent and i'll come back to the wood in a bit uh, and we know these are all heated here uh, but i'll place my tent just there and i'll get rid of two of my wood Oop, one i could have done that slightly different two i still have two more build actions left i could build one more building for one more wood um and i think i'm going to build a hunter's hut so we'll get rid of that wood now Build a hunter's hut. Foot is always uh, nice to have. <laughs> As I found out uh, while I was training, uh, in, in the first uh, kind of training game, yeah, food didn't really go my way in that first game. And again, I've run out of resources there, so I can't place any more actions, but I've still got two, kind of three more actions I can place. Um, so let's see. I may well gather some food, I think. So if I take my worker and I place him on the hut there, that then allows me to get five food and down here you can see i've already started with two okay. food so that will take me up to seven there we go uh and now i have two engineers left remember i can't use the child tokens as of yet now if we look on some of these tiles you'll see oh i keep doing that you'll see a um a symbol down in the bottom left of these tiles that means you can only place engineers on those so um but I can place engineers anywhere. Here's what I may well do. I could spend four food. Now I'm not going to do that just yet. Uh, can't put anybody there. I'm going to gather some resources. So you can gather resources by taking one of your workers, be that engineer, and placing it on one of these. So maybe I want some wood. So I can place him on there. Or I could place him on the gathering post. And that would collect one resource from every tile adjacent to it. Um, so, in fact, I'm going to do that. Oops, here we go. I'm going to do that. So we'll place him there. Yeah. And that means I take a wood and a coal. That's correct, isn't it? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. There we go. And this is also a heated uh, place because all our tiles are heated. Yeah, it's heated because I did that action there. Right, okay. Uh, then I've got one meeple left to place. Um, and let's just go back on that. So this allows me to do a law, doesn't it, at this stage? Is that correct? Uh, if I was to yeah, place an engineer on there? Yeah, you can a law if you... Ooh, let's see. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to introduce a law. 
I think I need to get access to these child workers. So, so if I place my <laughs> meeple on there, my engineer meeple, because it's got the engineering uh, icon on there, we now move up to the law space. So, in the full game, there's going to be eight laws. There are, remind me, Adam, there are four, uh, there are, uh, sorry, yeah, um, there are eight that are uh, visible, and then four, law, four laws that are uh, hidden. Is that right? In the full game, uh, you have uh, always uh, the same basic laws, and ah. of, uh, four additional laws are randomly uh, chosen before the game. So, okay. uh, uh, yeah, and I can choose any one of these laws, can't I? Basically, yeah, but they're in pairs. Yes. So, yes. so if I look here, I can choose either the top law or the bottom law on either one. And if I choose the top law, the bottom one is then discarded or flipped over. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's. Low. That's locked for the rest of the game. You cannot introduce the second one. So From here we point. have child labor, uh, food additives. So child labor is allowing me to work, use work, use children's workers. Food additives means I'm going to put sawdust into my food. Uh, and crowded quarters, uh, I can put one additional citizen pawn in each of my shelters. Or on the other side, I can heat up my shelters for one coal each. When I use a citizen pawn, pawn may spend a food to make this action count as a heated action. Excuse me, or I can unlock a child shelter as a special building, and I can build it immediately after this law. I've already made my mind up. The law I'm going to pass is going to be the child labor law. I know it is. I'm an evil, evil person. So this allows me to use children, child pawns as worker pawns to gather resources uh, from gathering posts or from resource piles. So that's the law I'm going to choose. So um, place sec- it here, please. On second, on the, on the left side of the board. On sec. Where are we looking? Just here, and that's a law, and that is now in play. And do I, I then flip this over? Yeah, is that right? Or uh, yeah, you flip you flip this over exactly. That's yeah, it. now it's locked. And yeah. after introducing law, a yeah. couple of things happens. First of all, uh, you shuffle this uh, two cards that was below uh, that law. Shuffle, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And now take one of them and put it on your uh, dusk deck because. Introducing some new law can have some consequences uh, later in the game. Later. Uh, there we go. So this was the first thing, and the second thing is the uh, how that law affects your hope and this content and child labor. <laughs> so if we go, if you can see up at the top right of that card, card, there are two icons. There's a blue circle and a brown circle. Blue is your hope, and your discontent uh, is the brown one there. So I'm going to. Minus hope and plus discontent. And let's show you where these are. This is this board down here. So hope is good. Discontent is bad. If I ever add five discontent tokens, that's the game over for me. And if I ever lose all my hope, that's also game over for me. So what what you do is you will put these tokens on there. And if they're white, they're activated. And if they're not white, then they aren't activated. So as you can as you remember from that card, I've got to lose one hope and gain one discontent. So rather than losing justice, which I know may come into play for me later, I'm actually going to move a motivation token into my bag here. There we go. And I've got to add one discontent. So I can either make one of these active or add a new token. I'm still okay. Um, I'm going to take a token and I'm going to add it to that pile. And you'll see why I've done that later. And that's that. That's that final yeah, action. Still okay. Doesn't it? Sounds like uh, last words. <laughs> yeah. Well, as I said, uh, you know, I'm quite surprised in uh, when you run me through the rules that I didn't lose it in round one. Uh, maybe this is the game where I lose it in round one. Who knows? Uh, I could break the game for you. <laughs> so that is all my actions done there. Um, so although. Oh, sorry, can I just clarify, actually? Uh, although I've unlocked child labor, that doesn't give me access to these now, does it? Yes, right? exactly. You can use them the same round. The same round? Oh, yeah. fantastic. All right, so... Very powerful law. <laughs> yeah. So my poor children, these poor... And I've got two daughters, and this is it. I'm going to send them out now. Um, I could do with some more wood, I think. Um, so I can... Because I've already got a meeple on the uh, gathering post... I, can I place another meeple on there? No, only no, one on the small one buildings, uh, yeah. two on the big buildings. On the big building. Build so let's go and place this child on there, take a wood and put that to there. 
Uh, you get two wood for that. Two, two wood. Okay. Sorry. Right. Okay. Uh, oh, I could have placed a tile as well, couldn't I? Um, and uh, yeah, and I shall place. So these are all all heated actions. Um, so I'm going to actually get some coal now as well. I think, and it's too cold as well, is it? Yep. There we go. So there we yeah, go. Always, always two resources always two. from from the pile. So if I look at the actions that I've done there, obviously I've placed some buildings, I've gathered some resources, I've heated the generator up to make sure all the action spaces I've got are uh, are heated. I've chopped a tree down, got wood, and I've uh, committed child labour laws. Um, so yeah, it's going well so far. I think that's the end of that first action phase, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And you can go to the next phase. So the next phase now is the dusk phase, and I have to resolve and draw a dusk card. So just remind me here, we have these social dispute cards. And do I have to add one of those yeah, to the pack first? In, I add, I add uh, one of this card uh, to your deck, so you have, uh, have it here. Always okay. one of this card uh, will be in your, in your deck. This, these are the cards... Uh, Strictly connected to your hope and discontent and uh, <laughs> mood of uh, of your people. Okay. Uh, you add also uh, cards the, the, from, from the there. Child yeah. Labor law. And now you shuffle them shuffle? and okay. draw one of them. There yeah. we go. And we're going to draw one. And let's have a look at this. And this is the inevitable. Oh my God. Every day we fight a bitter struggle against hunger, cold and diseases. There will be losses. Each gravely ill citizen dies and one citizen gets sick for each body token that you have. So, if we go down to the board here. Every gravely ill citizen dies. Now, you can see my sick, my sick tokens here. If that was flipped to the other side, that would be a gravely ill. But fortunately, round one, I've got no gravely ill citizens, so I'm okay on that part. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad, uh, bad drawing. <laughs> no, and then one citizen gets six for each body token that you have. I don't have any. What are body tokens? Sorry. Yeah, you don't. You don't have any because uh, nobody dies, and uh, you start with zero body token in the short scenario. There so we go. It's uh, it's good. It's that's not a problematic card now. <laughs> No, no, that's good. I think I'm happy I drew that out straight away. Um, so do I then remove that card from the um, from the pack? or No, I don't do it. It's only a social no, justice card. No, yeah, yeah. because yeah. Uh, when you draw social dispute, dispute. cards from that deck, all the cards uh, uh, that are here come back to your deck and can uh, shown again. So. Okay, cool. So I think that's the end of the dusk phase, isn't it, there? Yes, yeah. exactly. And you can go to the next one. So hunger phase, which is now to reduce hunger using food, uh, resolve and reset the hunger token, and feed citizens based on the round number. So, ha. Huh. So my hunger token is at zero. So therefore, yeah. I, I don't have any hungry citizens so far. Is that correct? Exactly, exactly. So now you have to only uh, feed the citizens type that is connected to the round you you are in right and that's over here yeah so here it is and you can see round one it's children so how many children are there i have five children so i have to reduce my hunger token by five basically so that takes it down to two exactly. there we go Ah, oh, that's nice and easy. This didn't work this way in the in the training game. I was uh, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't going so well for me in the training game in terms of food, um, and that's the hunger phase done. So as you can see, it's going quite exactly. quickly. Yeah. So now it's a night phase. So we're going to return all the meeples to my supply. So let's just get my guys back up here. Yeah, I will help a little. Yeah, with thank that. you very much. Oh, yeah. Child. Yeah, and both child. There we go. Okay. And then what we do is we place citizen meeples in heated shelters. So, uh, unfortunately, I only built one set of tents, so I can only place two uh, meeples in this tent. And that means for every citizen that's left after that two, they're going to, there's going to be some sickness happening there. So... At the moment, yep. in my sickness, I've got one sick engineer. That's all I've got. The rest of the sick workers, sick children, there's none there. 
I don't really make, I've only got two engineers, uh, maybe I don't want to get them up, so I'm going to place, I'm going to be a little bit cool, uh, not so cruel here, one child and one engineer in uh, a, a kind of, uh, in the shelter that I've got built for two people here. So that means I have to have four sick workers, one sick engineer and one sick child. So if I go down okay, here, exactly. it's one sick engineer, that moves up to there. Sick child is one. Uh, uh, this is worker, I think. Yeah. Oh, sorry, worker is four. Yeah, worker is four there. And child, oh, that's the hunger. Sorry, there we go. Sick child yeah. is one. So that's my sickness, but it doesn't end there, does it? Um, uh, it ends the night phase, but oh, of yes. course with sickness you will have to uh, it... phase the sickness in the other phase also. Yes, and this is where if we look at the top of here, some of these icons will come in in a little while. So that is the night phase done. So we're already from the action phase completed this kind of the second half here. So what we're going to do now is move into the second day. <clears throat> And we're going to move the round marker, which is fine. Yeah. So we're going to move this round marker. This is here, and that you're still over alive. There. You didn't break the game. So. I did not lose it in day one, and let's see how day two goes here. So, so, and then we have to resolve event tokens. So if we look up here, there are. Is this right for the event tokens? Um, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, this is... Certain objectives here, so that I have to complete. I have to build a beacon. If I had not built a beacon from round three, I would lose one hope. Um, it's not round three yet. Uh, I have to build a workshop. If I haven't built that by round three, then I'd add one discontent. It's not round three yet. And here we go. I have to build two bunk houses. So that's a little bit of a longer term objective. So in reality, I'm okay at the moment on those. Um, yes, but exactly. I, I have nothing to, happens yet. Nothing happens yet. Uh, and then the morning phase. So now we have to draw and resolve a morning card. Um, and that's these here. Yeah. So let's exactly. just do that. And flip and let's have a look at that card so our citizens are concerned about poor working conditions and no safety standards so i get to choose one of these don't i basically so i can choose option one which is we must provide safe working conditions to prevent accidents our engineers will take care of this and i can place one used engineer token in my supply or there is no time for this now. Uh, we must work as fast as possible without worrying about potential losses. And I add a discontent. And I also add card D043 to the dust deck. Look, this is where the moral dilemmas uh, start. The moral dilemmas start to come in. We've seen it on the laws here. I've now got to think about kind of citizen safety. Uh, do I protect them or do I say no? We've got to work as fast as possible. Uh, I either sacrifice an a used engineer token. Oh, sorry, get one in my supply, or I yeah, add one means, discontent. Block it will block one engineer uh, to the whole round. That's that's how it works. And that's what I'm going to do. I I don't want to add more discontent yet because I added a discontent token earlier. I know I could activate them, but that has an effect on the dusk events. So I'm going to place one used engineer token in my supply. So where are these yeah. then, Adam? And yeah. this is this is uh, here. This yeah. Is the, this one. Yeah. Place it here. And uh, when the action uh, phase started, you have to place one engineer on that token. That's all. All right. Okay. Fine. Okay. So that is the um, the morning phase done, and now it's a generator phase. <laughs> so first is to add sick based on the g uh, on the heat token position. So Adam, I think I'm going to let you talk me through this again and just remind me here. Yep. Okay, so this is the uh, part when, uh, you know, overall heating and overall uh, weather uh, comes in and uh, can make some people uh, uh, sick. So here you see icons on the left side uh, and you check the highest uh, weather token. Uh, so this is, uh, this is this one. You have to activate all icons that are below that token up to the uh, your level of uh, heat, so the place where you put your heat token. You also can spend some uh, coal during uh, during that phase before that. So for now, uh, it will activate that icon if you don't spend any coal, and it means uh, you have to flip one of your sick token to the gravely ill side, yeah. or you can spend one coal and protect your people from uh, from that. It's Let's guess coal. what I'm doing. I've got quite a bit of coal. Let's spend a coal, I think, and we will move that token up to there. So that is not activated now. 
Exactly. And now we can go uh, uh, to the next step of generator phase, and it means how many call you will put uh, uh, into the generator, or maybe how many malfunction uh, keys yeah. I should say. Uh, so you see here uh, number two, and it means you add two cubes uh, to that generator bag. And this is the part when the you know generator tower comes in because uh, in a physical game you just put that call into the tower and something falls out from from it. Yeah. Uh, here you have to roll these two uh, uh, d8 dice uh, and use the lower number. And this is how many uh, cubes fall out from that bag. And there's only, here. there's only two cubes in there, so there's only two could come out. So no matter what that number is, the maximum I would have been able to put on this round is two. Yeah, for this round is only two. Uh, but what is important, uh, you have to be careful because when uh, you put here on the malfunction track the 11th uh, cube or more, uh, your generator breaks down. It means you uh, flip that token to the red uh, side and uh, you will also add plus one to starting cost. So the starting uh, generator cost will be higher. But also when you have it on the red side and uh, it goes second time uh, uh, on the malfunction uh, track, it, uh, it is second breakdown, it means generator explodes and you lose the game. So for now it's quite safe. It's okay. Later, yeah. Later, yeah, later it can be a problematic. And as we said, as Adam said, you know, in the full game, those this dice mechanism won't exist. It'll be the tower that will you'll put the malfunction cubes in there, and it will spit out a certain number, and that's what we'll add it to there. That's a great physical aspect of it there. Looking forward to that to seeing that in the full in full flow. So yeah, let's. Yeah, uh, it was lots of work. To I make bet. It, uh, <laughs> working you know in uh, in plastic it's uh, uh, yeah it was it was very interesting but uh, very hard one so then it's uh, reset the heat token position so that means that goes back up to there is that correct yeah yep yeah okay each round new call must be spent to okay make the heat Fine. And this number at the bottom here is the number of call that must be spent. At the moment, we're still on one there. And I take it there are yes. certain certain effects in the game that are going to increase that number, aren't they? Yeah. For example, the storm will be one of that <laughs> uh, one of that reason it goes up. So we will see it. We will see it. Round. So that's the generator phase done, and now we're going on to the weather phase. And here we go. So this is we draw a weather card, and that is remind me. On the uh, left side of the generator. The, because, board, of course, it's, it's to do with the generator. Yeah, so here we go. We'll flip that over. And there are a number of actions on here. So the top action is how many spaces the storm token moves towards the round marker. So if we look over here, we can see the storm token starts uh, for these, this introductory scenario on nine, and the round marker's here. That is currently zero. So it doesn't move anywhere there. So that's good. Yeah. That's okay. That's a good perfect news. card. Good. Yeah. Exactly. Then the next round down, the next uh, uh, row down is how far up the board each token moves. And as you can see, each token is moving one. So at the moment, that's nice and easy to do there. We move that to there, that to there, and that to there. Then we have hunt. So for each hunt, hunt, hunt lodge I've got, that's the amount of food uh, I generate. Hunter's hut. Yeah. Hunter's, hunter's hut. Hunter's hut gives you some. And I believe I built a hunter's hut somewhere. There we go. Oops, that's that. Yeah. Oh, man. There we go. I'll keep coming up with that one second. There we go. A hunter's hut there. So that means I will get, there's one hunter's hut, I will get another three food, which is this here. So it takes from two to five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then. Finally, if I got an expedition, if I'd sent an expedition out, I would then move them to on the expedition card. I don't have any expeditions out as of yet. Yeah, it can be introduced after you build a beacon. So yeah, there we go. You will see it later. Exactly. Okay. So that is the weather phase done, and now it's the preparation phase where we resolve six citizen tokens and we update the citizen meeple number. So this takes it back here. So if you remember. When we move these sick citizens up here, 
excuse me, when we move these six citizens here, it tells you uh, what I've got to do with it. So at the top, we've got this one syringe. So remind me on this, Adam, um, this, this, this syringe mark here. Yeah, syringe always means you have to move uh, one space forward. On one space forward. on this track here. So there we go. So each of these moves there. And what that will do is that would effectively move them up the track. But down at the bottom here, we've got a... Um, um, hunger uh, effect. Oh, that's a hunger effect. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's just this here. So all this has done at the moment is just move these up this track. I have kind of five sick workers, three sick engineers, and one sick child. What else do I have to do off that? Uh, that's, that's it. Uh, that's all. You you should also update your meeples. Meeples, they are it? correct. Uh, Nothing yeah. changed. Nobody dies. It's not bad for yeah. you now. So, so yeah, as we see here, I've got uh, two children because my child marker is there and that's the marker above it. Two engineers, that's there. And four worker meeples because that's there. Had it been on any side of this gold line, so it had gone down to there, my workers would have gone to three. Oh, so that is effectively, you know, kind of a round and a half done at the moment. We're, 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 we're cracking on with this now. I go back into the action phase and start making those difficult decisions on where people want to go. However... I do think I, about how much coal have I got? I need to kind of start that generator, don't I? So I, c I can do that as my first action, I take it, Adam? Yeah, this is, uh, this is without any action. You, you can do it uh, anytime, uh, anytime you want. What you have to do uh, at the start of the action phase is to place oh, uh, an right, engineer here, yeah, and he's locked at, yeah. uh, for that round. Okay. So that's that done. Um, so. So if I place a one coal, and that starts this token here, uh, that will get me onto where? Will that put it on this one here? Yes. All right, okay. So I haven't actually, I've got all these as unheated actions at the moment. They're still cold actions. That means I would get sick. Ideally, I kind of want to get to here as a minimum. So that's going to cost me one, two, two more coal? Or is that three uh, coal? Always, always one coal one for coal. one space. This uh, is only how many cubes you have going to put to into the generator. So, so that's okay. I've got another two coal. So I'm going to take yeah. another another two coal out of this. And I, I Remember mean, that moment. It will change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've made a decision. And uh, it's going to come back and bite me in the backside there. Okay, so I started my generator. I know that anything within this sphere now is now a heated action. That means I don't get sick people when I place people on there. What else have I got? I've got three of these here. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to place a tile. So a tile is a cold action. Uh, it's not just engineers. Can anybody place a tile? Or is it just engineers? Yeah, yeah, anybody. Uh, well, children, not children. Yeah. yeah. So this would yeah, allow this me... This is snow removal action, so... Yeah, so this is cold. So people are going to get sick from this, basically. And if you imagine, I can take two A tiles or one B tile. So anything in this kind of first circle outside the core is an A tile. And then anything in this final one here is a B tile. And I think to start off, I'm going to take two A tiles. So, of course, it's an Adam Kupinski game. Nothing is easy. You don't get to see what tiles you place and where you place them. Uh, Adam Kupinski wants us all to die a horrible death. So, here we go. And then we flip these tiles over. And there we go. So, if I look at that you tile... Know, you uh, never know what is uh, under the snow. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not <laughs> thematic. <laughs> so, we have two trees and three coal will go in there. So, Adam's going to put those in there. And then this one is three trees and one wood would go in there. So, I've got some, some resources. That's okay. So, that's that first action. But it's a, it, it, was, it was a cold action because I was removing snow. So, I increase my worker by one sick. Yep, here we go. And now you can see, you can see that you know things are starting to edge up a little bit. Now I'm starting to get more sick people, and the more sick people I get, the harder this game is going to be because these actions, these punitive actions, start to get really, really awful. Okay, so I've explored and I've done this. Um, oh, what else can I do? See, I could. Oh, see, part of my thing here is I need to build a beacon. Uh, this is part of my objective. Yes. You know, don't do it by the start of next round. I will lose one hope. But I also need to build a workshop as well. Uh, and that is... Oh, no. Workshop is... Where's a workshop? Da -da 
Uh, first building in the left. Ah, uh, like man. Yeah. Okay. So, however, I'm going to build the beacon, I think. So, no, I'm not. I'm going to collect some resources to enable me to do both actions. So, I'm going to take this child, um, and I'm going to place this child. Uh, and it doesn't really matter. It's a heated space still at the moment. So, I'm placing him in this square, and I'm going to take two wood. Oh, I should have done both. But there we go. On two. Sorry for anybody if this is painful watching my tabletop simulator skills. Uh, and I collected resources. Now I'm going to do a build action. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build a beacon because I don't want this awful lack of hope coming up on round three. And you can see that beacon's going to cost me three wood because it's in this particular uh, column here. Oh, sorry, yeah, this, col this, is the, this, this column is here. The, yeah. the section yeah. under you have some special buildings. Yes, yeah. Uh, and of course, we that was one the child shelter which we because we just passed the child law that's not there. So I'll pay, take my three kind of wood. Oh God, here we go again. Uh, three wood and a, there we go. Oh, one, <laughs> two, three. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to take my beacon. Now this is a double building, so I can put this on a space that has two squares, but I will lose the resources below it. Um, I'm not too bothered about these particular resources here, so I'm going to put that there. So we'll get rid of these resources. Exactly. Oh. There we go. There we go. And I'm going to take that tile and I'm going to put that just there. Boom. Yes. Okay, and what do these symbols mean at the bottom of here then? What do I do now I've got the beacon? Okay, so beacon is a, a passive building, so you never send people uh, to a beacon itself, but yep. it unlock uh, possibility of uh, going to the uh, expedition. Expedition. In the full game, uh, this means that two expedition cards are uh, placed here. Yep. In the short scenario, there is only one expedition track, so you put one card here, and in action phase, you can take your uh, uh, meeple and put him here on the first space of that expedition. Excellent. He will uh, goes, uh, goes that track during the weather phase, and if you goes up to that point, you will see what he, uh, what he find. Okay. What is very nice, sending somebody on expedition means that uh, this meeple don't need any shelter, so it has some good some benefits. Uh, well, good things and benefits for you, yeah. And again here, I can send either worker or engineer uh, on the expedition, can't yeah, I, basically? Yeah, only not a child. Yeah. You know what? I think maybe maybe I'm going to do that now um, because, you know, why not? Why not start as I mean to go on? Yeah. Um, but if we look here, some of my resources are getting a little bit low. Um, so, hold on. Uh, do, yeah, that was two, you, two you build actions. You still have two building actions. I do, that, yes, uh, I do. Sorry, yeah. yeah. And I said the other thing I was going to do was build... Oh, I picked up the entire pack there. I don't know. Uh, was build a workshop so I don't get activated on that card. And I'm going to put my workshop just here. And this is going to cost me one wood because it came from this column. So I'll take yes. another wood off. There we go. Uh, and that workshop then gives me a couple of actions that I can spend if I put an engineer on there that allow me to do something. Um, okay. So I've got two. Uh, I've still got one action left I could do. I could build one more building um, for one wood. Uh, let's see. Maybe I will build a medical building. <laughs> Uh, it can help. It can help, yeah. So there we go. Let's build a medical building, and we'll take that, and we'll move that back down to the board. Oops, I just managed to do that. There we go. Uh, and it looks like I need to cover another resource space. That's okay, though. I can cover the trees at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, so let's take those. Not ideal, because trees, if I put a sawmill in place, will then get me some more benefit there, so get me some more wood. And... So I've got one worker, one engineer, and one child left. I think I'm going to use one of my children to go and gather some coal because I'm going to need that in the future. Uh, put that on there and take two coal. Of course, you can send them to gathering post, yeah? Yeah, oh, I could do. Uh, and yeah, and that would be one from each surrounding um, thing, wouldn't it? Yeah, so let's do that instead, actually. Yeah, I forgot about the gathering post. So I'll just put that, those back. 
take my child and I'll send it to the gathering post and that's one resource from each adjacent tile. So that'd be one wood. Yeah. One coal from there and one coal from there. So I still get the same extra. result. I just get an extra an extra wood for it. Okay, so now I've also got what else do I need to do? Um so on that card, that's all done. After I built a beacon, discard this scenario and place X fifty one on the display. Uh, after you build a workshop, discard this scenario and place a construction planning technology card on the display. Yeah, you have you have that technology, and uh, you can use your workshop, sending there uh, your engineer to uh, to activate that uh, that uh, technology. Okay, fine. So that would and then both cards are flipped, flipped. because okay. you're done with them with those cards. Yeah. Um, so I don't really want to spend anybody to the workshop at the moment. Uh, I don't want to repair. Um, if I look at my heat here, that would add three cubes onto there. So I'm okay not repairing my generator just yet. Um, I'm running out of spaces. I've got resources. I could explore, uh, but that would make somebody sick. Oh, what to do, what to do. Um, okay. And my engineer can only go on the ones with the engineer ones, and there's, there aren't many of those. So if I if I put my engineer on the medic post, does that mean that I would well I would uh, move sickness down for anything any any token by three? Yes. yes or one you, token three uh, times, or or three token that's one time. Your, that's your uh, your choice. Uh, any tokens, just three time uh, to the left. So let's do that. Then. Or or the second thing, you can uh, heal or gravely ill people, but you don't. Have I don't any have any for now. So if I move these sick worker down to here, uh, and I don't know, let's move a sick engineer to to there. Yeah. Uh, that now has affected this action here uh, when we come to that phase. So I've got I've got one worker left. Um, our resources are getting a little bit low, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm okay with coal, ish. I think <laughs> I'm yeah. going to get. I'm, uh, yeah, you say yes, Adam. I don't believe you when you say yes. Um, I'm going to get two more coal, I believe. So let's just go here. Uh, let's use this before I have to use this. No, yeah, I could. No, nope, my sickness is okay. I'm going to get the coal. People can sleep outside for the time being. <laughs> and <laughs> <them that. laughs> yeah. wow okay so there we go um that's everything done in terms of my worker actions there uh i have no more worker actions to do if we go back into the card now uh we're now going to draw and resolve a dust card and that's one of these here so I take this card move it over flip it oh and it's a social dispute card so I have to activate this card. The morality, morality of our citizens influences the situation in the city. If most of your active tokens are greed, apathy, anger, motivation, care or justice, then you will do this. If there is a draw, you apply the results of all tokens and make it up in the order above. And if you look down here at the tokens, I have a draw for justice and for greed. Those are the only white activated tokens I've got. I'll just zoom in. So that means I would do the greed action first and then the justice action. So I would add three hunger for each active greed token. I only have one active greed token, so that means my hunger token is going to move up to three, which takes it to there. Yes. We've also got the justice token here, and that says exhaust one discontent token or activate one hope token for each active justice. I could actually discard one of these or add another token here or activate one of these. I'm going to discard, uh, I think. Is you can right? exhaust. I can exhaust or, as well. Uh, or, or activate. Right, okay, so I can exhaust yeah. or activate. Right, okay. I'm going, to ex I'm going to do the care. That's what I'm going to do. I'll flip that over, and okay. hopefully it's going to have some benefit for me. Now, because I've done those actions there, and this is a social dispute card, I now remove that social dispute card. Is that correct? Yes. I take another one. Oops. Take another one. Flip it over and add it to that pile, yeah? Yeah, and add all discarded cards from that pile. Also. Oh, right. Uh, here, here, yeah. Oh, then again to the deck. There. Right, okay. And, and then shuffle, shuffle that. Yes. There we go. And there you go back. And that's every time you add a social dispute card, yeah? Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. You'll see at the bottom, after resolving this card, remove it from the game, shuffle the discard, uh, dust discard pile, and a random social dispute card back into this deck. Okay. Okay. Whew. So that's a dust phase, and now it's reduce hunger using food. So we go back here, and we can see that I have a hunger of three. So I will do one, two, three. Remove that down there. And that goes to there. That's correct, yeah? Yes. Yes, exactly. Ah, oh, man. Uh, resolve and reset the hunger token, which is what I've just done. Uh, and then feed citizens based on the round number. So if we look here, now we can see on round two that it's engineers. And I look at the number of mm -hmm. where my engineers are, which is there. Uh, and that means I have to feed them seven. Oh dear, I have two food left. This isn't good. So I remove that by five. Uh, sorry, by two. And I increase this by five. Yep, the sick engineer. Uh, here. You oh, sorry. Your, uh, hunger, yeah. Okay. Just hunger. Just hunger. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. next round will be interesting. Yeah, thank you very much for this. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that's the hunger phase done, and then the night phase, return all citizen meeples to my supply, so let's put all my meeples back. And you say this engineer token, does that go now, basically? Uh, yeah, this engineer goes here, and token uh, just, goes just remove it from your supply, exactly. Okay. I think, is that everybody back? Oh, yeah, that worker stays there, because he's on the exploration phase. Yeah. Okay, yeah, there we go. Ah, right, okay. Um, place citizen meeples in heated shelters. Right. How many bunks did I build? Two. Yeah, I, I think you don't want to build tents, so... Yeah. So I need to... I'm going to have some sick people now. So if I go back down to my track, who can I afford to be sick? You know what? I don't want my workers to go up, but I think I can afford for my children and my engineers to go a little bit sick. So I'm going to place two workers uh, into the shelter. That means I get one worker getting sick, two engineers getting sick, and two children getting sick. So I'm going to move my worker there, and both these two up by two. Yeah. I will uh, talk about something uh, what can be important here, because... Uh, Obviously, you cannot have more sick uh, children or more, more engineers oh, than that you got. That all yeah. children you have. So, yeah. if, there is, uh, if there is a, a situation where this token is on the same uh, level yeah. uh, and you have to move it forward, instead of that, you flip it. Okay, and that would make them gravely ill at so that point. It, yeah. It, yeah, it can be quite important later. <laughs> I should think so as well. And I'm sure if we get to later, um, and Adam seems to think that the next round is going to be difficult, um, then we'll see how that works out. So, uh, yeah, and that's every homeless person gets sick. So that's the second day finished. You know, I'm yes. still okay. I haven't killed all my, I haven't killed anybody yet, I don't think. Yes. Um, yeah, so this is going good. This is going good. And you can see the state of the board. We're starting to expand here now. Uh, the generator is, is kind of moving up, but it's starting to malfunction a little bit. We've got some resources, but I've got all my workers back, and I completed two objectives. I still have this third objective to do, which is to build two bunkhouses, and let's see how we get on about that. Okay, so now we go back to this card, and it says, move the round mark marker and resolve the event tokens. So round marker now goes to round three, and event tokens... That would be on here had I not done the, um, had I not carried out those actions. But because I did, there's no negative actions there for me. And that one doesn't have that. Yep. Okay. Whew. Right. Draw and resolve a morning card. That's these here. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, uh, I want to say. Uh, flip that. Put that there. And this is where we make the actions again. Oh, there's been theft. Oh, okay. So some of our supplies were stolen. What should we do with that? Place this card in the events display. Place two resources this is, from this it here. Okay. Place. So should we move that now then? Yeah. Uh, and yes. then. Uh, oops, went too far. Uh, it will be placed. It oh, will. Will. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Place two resources from your supply and two additional resources for each active greed token you have on this card. 
I don't have any green circles. I on think me. I talk about card like this. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I, at the moment, I only have to place two resources on there. Oh wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. you have active grid. No, I thought it said on that because card though. To... Oh. It says all right. Okay, for each active grid token you have on this card, but that just means active grid cards in, in total, does it? Um. Okay. So yeah, so you yeah. place two always and plus two for each grid token. Oh, I see. Yeah, I was reading that wrong. Okay, yes. yeah. So, okay. Right, I've got one wood. I've got one steam core and five coal. I've got to place four, to four on there. I need yes. as much coal as I can. I'm going to take the wood. Uh, do I place, place it on, on the card? On the card, yes. yeah. Uh, I'm going to take the steam core, which I know... But I need to do it, and okay. th then I'm going to place two coal, because I need those coal to kind of help me out a little bit. So one and, okay. yeah. and two. And the second one. And then and we... now it's your decision. Yeah. So ignore and keep the info for myself. I get another greed, and that means that, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, what means I'd... plus one greed? Because uh, I think uh, we didn't see uh, that before. Plus so, one uh, specific uh, token means you uh, draw another one, and after drawing another inactive one, you check if any of those inactive tokens are greed and one of them uh, going to activate. So right. it's more ah. than plus one. Okay. But if there were no greed tokens, then it wouldn't activate it. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah. Yeah. If there will, uh, if there are an inactive greed token after uh, after drawing plus one, okay. it will activate. It. So then know. I can expose and investigate, which is minus one hope, and place one used worker engineer token in my supply and add D card D double O three to the dust deck, uh, or I can keep it in secret and investigate. Um, and I think that's what I'm going to do. Look, I think the worst case scenario is, I don't know what card D004 is, obviously. <laughs> um, but I think I'm going to investigate. I've still got to use the, place the used worker or engineer token. So let's do that. And I think I'll place a worker token because they're a little bit. Yeah. Sure. yeah. And then we need to add a specific card, which is D004 to the deck then. So. Yeah, I will help with that. This is uh, okay. search. Uh, search function and I add that card here to your deck. It's shuffled so, already. Reshuffle, reshuffle them, yeah. <laughs> so that's and my. That was all. That was it. But you say that was all. I lost most of my resources and I've, uh, uh, I've I've lost use of one of my workers and also I've added a card I know nothing about to the deck. So yeah, that's not quite all. That's quite bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now we go back over to the generator and we add the sick based on the heat token position. Ah. So the heat token position is here. That means that, ooh, none of these actions apply here. Is that correct? Yes, yes, yeah. exactly, because there is no new icon there. and both icons are on the same level uh, or below your heat token. So that's great. And it's good. I, that's, that's good. I've done something correct there ish so far. Um, place malfunction cubes into the generator bag. Okay, so this is, we look at the highest level here and I need to add three cubes into no, that. No, the heat token. The heat sorry, heat token, token level, the, sorry. Le yes. Two. Two into there. So one. Because it depends how many coal you spend, yeah? Yes. And there we go, and do that, and run. let's see, five, and we know that's, uh, there's only two in that bag, so those yeah. can go there. It will be very bad, uh, bad roll if you have more of that. Yeah. <laughs> but that's okay, and then we go back to this card here, uh, and we reset the heat token position, so this token goes back on there. Yes. Still one, still one coal to activate that, but then it's going to, you know, I need additional coal to kind of move that up there uh, in future phases, which I think I've saved enough coal for that, so we're okay for the next round. <laughs> <laughs> weather phase, we're going to draw a weather card, so let's go back over here and see what see what nastiness Adam's got in in uh, oops, uh, in, uh, in store for me here. So let's take a weather card, flip that over. And there we go. We can see the first thing we've got to do is move the weather token one place towards the round marker here. And as yeah. soon as that as soon as that hits that round marker, that's when the storm hits, and uh, and that's when shit really gets bad. So um, 
And then we're going to move these up the board. So you can see that the bottom icon is uh, the bottom token is not going to move, but the other two are going to move um, uh, additional spaces. So we're going to move that one there and that one there. And it's still one coal to move onto each space, isn't it? Basically, so it's it's kind of it's adding a gap between where I where I start heating the orange buildings and where I start eating the the yellow buildings. It's going to cost me more coal to get there. Exactly. So we've got Hunt. Uh, we know that I've got one Hunt Lodge on there. I only built one Hunt Lodge. So that is two food I'm going to get on here. Oops. Trying to sneak an extra one there. Uh, and then we've got the Expedition. And he's going to move four spaces. Yes. That, that means he moves to there, which is great. Yeah, so put, put him here uh, for yeah. a moment. And yeah. now flip that card. And that says... Abandoned campsite, abandoned camp. We have found something in refugees' camp uh, that was abandoned. Unfortunately, there was nobody there. Oh, great! So I can either return. What, what uh, you can choose? Yeah. Yeah. So I can, can either return immediately. Ret yeah. Or I can continue, and that means I take it. I draw another card. Yeah. But does this cost me? Yeah. Continue means. Yeah. Continue uh, means that uh, we put that card here, and he would go on there. Uh, goes here, and after uh, finishing that card, you also uh, will have uh, that kind of choice. And this, what you see on the bottom of the cards, yeah. he will carry on. So uh, you will get the same resource plus some additional resource, but not as fast as now. So this is this is the uh, decision. All right. If you don't go immediately on uh, uh, on the B card. The A card will be on the, that side, and it means the uh, you know travel will take longer. Okay, so what do you advise? Come on, I, I'm asking you for help here now. Yeah, so uh, you know it's like always it. good to have some additional resources. I agree. So, but if I continue, so what you think to return now or to or to continue? Uh, I will probably return because you know some yeah. uh, some guy stole part of your resource. Absolutely, it will yeah. be nice to add something. So if I take him back now, I get two wood and four coal. Yep. Yeah? yeah, and this guy goes back to your supply. There, there we go, and I got a couple of wood. There we go, and uh, four coal was it? Yeah, you can take from that big call. Uh, of course, uh, yeah. It just a bug. Okay. <coughs> that was pretty we good. Start. We flip that yeah. and put the another one. Uh, sorry, another one on it. On and it. Yeah. There. Okay. That was pretty good, actually. That worked out not too bad because I built up my resources again there, so that's okay. Um, so yeah, uh, now we go back into the preparation phase, uh, and this is where we resolve the six citizens so token. So it's back down here. And we know that I have to just move everybody on one because I'm... St oh, no. No. I have to move no. these two on one. Uh, this one moves on one, and I have to flip it as well. Yes. Is that correct? But these two move on one. Oh, God. So I now have one gravely ill worker. Um, I, I mean, strong possibility, if I don't cure some of my children, that I'm going to get some gravely ill children as well. And also, my engineers are very close to that as well there. Yes. So, yeah. So this isn't good. Yeah, this isn't good. This isn't good. It's not bad. It isn't good. Okay. Uh, update Citizen Meeple's number, and that's this here. I'm still within here. Nobody's died yet, so all my Meeple's are still exactly the same. Yep. And we go back into the action phase. Oh, Day exactly. three. Day, 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 I've, I've lost count. Day three, this is, isn't it? Yeah. So, I think my worker meeples are still within here, and I need to explore a little bit more, I think. So, what's the difference between yeah. the A and B tiles? Or the B tiles have what? A greater opportunity of what? More resource? Uh, or? Yeah, it's a little better in resources, and B tiles are only place where you can find steam cores on the board. Okay, fine. Right. Actually, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, spend. Is it is it one call to put the the token here, and then another call to move it up everywhere? Basically, so if I wanted to heat yeah. everything, one, two, three, four, that would cost me four coal to go to there, wouldn't it? Yeah. 
Oh, look exactly. at that. I have four coal. Let's do that. Let's do that action. Yeah, they bring you something from Expedition so Yeah, so that's Exactly good. what you need. Yeah. I'm leaving that one now because I might not look for steam cores just yet. Um, and I think the next thing I'm going to do is do a cold action. So I will... Yeah, oh, no, I need to put a work on there too, first. Yeah. Yep. There we go. And then I can do the cold action there. And I'm going to get two A tiles, I think. Yeah, so let's do that. One there, because it's around this gathering post, and I've got a greater chance okay. of collecting resources from there. And one there. And let's flip this over. Oh, this is not too bad. We have two trees and two wood. And here we have four coal. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, I put so, everything. So that's not too bad. What I might do now, though, what I might... Oh, I've still got... Yeah, that's that action done. I have to move my sick worker up one, don't I? There we go. What I might do now is I might build a sawmill. So I might do some building actions here. Uh, where's my sawmill? Is that that one? Yeah, that's two, two wood. I've got two wood. No, I'm going to gather some resources first, I think. So let's use my child to gather resources from the gathering post. Yes. That means I get one of that, one of that, one of that, and one of that, because they're all adjacent to it. And that gives me a little bit more to play with there. Okay, now I'm going to build. I'm going to build a sawmill. because You have sawmill. Yeah, uh, I do. Yeah, so I could. I do. I don't need to build a sawmill. I was, I was thinking about this here. No, uh, I might build a bunkhouse. Yeah, let's build a bunkhouse. So let's get rid of three of those. Remember how many food you will need this round because this oh. round you will need to feed your workers. Oh man, here. you're good. You're very good. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just let's, to remind that yeah. it can be a problem. Okay, so let's build now to start off with. Let's build that hunter's lodge, I think. Okay, uh, and I could place that just there. Okay, I still have yes. two more build actions left. Um, my people are getting sick. Do I want to build another hunt lodge? I could, but. Um, oh, the coal thumper. Mm. No, I don't need the coal thumper yet. Um, yeah, okay, I'm going to build another hunter's hut. This is good. Yeah, uh, that way I'm, I'm, oh, I'm kind of hedging my bets there. Let's build that there because that's empty now, so he can go there. Exactly. And... So that was one, and then for my final two, I'm going to build some tents as well, I think. Here we People go. People will be happy for that. I think I'll be happy for that as well. And you can see there's a real a real kind of dichotomy going on now that um, <laughs> that I want to build more stuff and different stuff. Let's just move that call out of the way. Um, I want to build more stuff and different stuff, but you have only so many moves you can make and so many resources. Okay, uh, so that's three actions done. That's not too bad. Um, I could get more food. So who can go into the there? I could place a worker onto there, and I can get five food. That takes me up to seven. Yeah, it's quite close. Yeah. Um, and I might reduce some of my sickness as well. So, remind me on the sick actions, I can, um, does it allow me to flip a token open, over? So, uh, could I? Yeah, you can move, move free, uh, any kind, uh, or yeah. flip all gravely ill on the normal side. Right, okay. And how do I upgrade these buildings? You say certain things can be upgraded, how do I upgrade yeah, them? Yeah, you can, you can send your uh, engineer here. On okay. the workshops, spend yeah. one uh, steam core, and after that you just uh, flip, flip it over on the other side. But I don't have uh, with better insulation and sometimes with better effects. Yeah, but of course I don't have a steam core because I um, I got rid of it. Uh, yeah, okay. Has that been flipped back? There we go. 
Um, oh. Do you know what? Uh, three. I think yeah, I'm going to fix. <laughs> I think I'm going to fix the generator. <laughs> okay. So remind me what I do here for the generator then uh, to fix uh, that. If you put uh, engineer here, you just reduce uh, by five, five the five. number of cubes. And yeah. if you put the engineer and spend a steam core, you remove all of them. Okay. I'm all right with I'm all right with five. I think yeah. Um, and yeah, and those there. Oh, uh, exactly. Yeah. There we go. There you go, I'm getting there. Oh, I'll put it in a sec. I'll let you put it in. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the, the, back is, the back is really small. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I am. I may collect... How much coal have I got there? I got... Uh, it's not terrible. Five, unless the cards yeah. work against me. I think I'm going to get some wood. Oh, so I'll get child. Uh, put the child in that box and collect a couple of wood. Here we go. Oh, yeah, I put it... Uh, oh, God, yeah, line. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing my own wood away. People, people <laughs> looks at you. <laughs> I, I think the last thing I'm going to do is... Oh, I'm going to get oh, more food. I'm going okay. to get more food because I think that food is important. Maybe. Okay, yeah, fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now that was the uh, the action phase done, and now it's draw and resolve a dust card. So let's see what we get here then. Oh. Work accidents. Children are frequent victims of accidents at work. Plus one sick child for every porn, uh, every child porn used for action this round. I used two. That means my child, yes. child goes to two. Oh, God. Right, okay. So remind me what happens here then. So uh, because you cannot move it, so yeah. For the first child, you flip it, and yeah. For the second one, you flip it again, and it means some uh, child dies. Yeah, there you we reduce go. that. Yeah. Reduce, of course, the uh, yeah. sick number. Go in line with that. And yeah. now, because because somebody dies, you yeah. uh, take body token, corpse token from the bag. Hold on, let's go here. here. All right. Uh, from and here, yeah. The black bag, yeah. Yeah. And flip it. Put it here, yeah, and flip it. Okay, upper part means uh, how many hope you uh, lost if the uh, engineer or worker dies. Uh, lower part means how many hope you lost when child dies. So, uh, so it's uh, minus it's a, one hope. Minus one hope, which I go back down here, and that means I can just flip that over, yeah? Yes. There we go. This or the justice. Or the, or the justice. Your choice, yeah. which one? Yeah. Actually, I'm going to flip that over, I think, yeah. I care sounds good to me. Oh, wow. Okay, so we seem to be exploring every part of this game so far. So that was that done. Um, so they stay there. That's fine. Yep, there's nothing else to yes. do on that card, is there? Okay, so that was the dusk phase. And now hunger phase. Reduce hunger using food and then resolve and reset the hunger token. So yeah. hunger well, token. Hunger is here. So that is at five. Yeah, uh, and I reduce that by five, which takes me down to seven. Okay, which means because I got my hunger down here, I don't incur any of these penalties of increasing my uh, my uh, discontent, which is good. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Or or people dying. Or people dying is uh, big enough. Yeah. And feed citizens based on round numbers. So if you look here, I'm on round three, and that means I have to feed my workers. My workers are here, so I have four workers to feed. That's correct, isn't it? Yep. Uh, yeah. No, no. 17. Oh, 17. Sorry. 17 workers to feed. Sorry. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so I can... Uh, uh, that means that goes down there because there's seven. That means my workers go up by... Six, uh, no, sorry, no, hunger. hunger goes yeah. up by 11. There we go. Uh, 10. Uh, 17, wasn't it? Yeah. Seven. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry. Exactly. Yeah. There we go. Ah, oh, so things yes. are... <laughs> so the next round can be hard if you don't do something so, with it. With, yeah, I've got to get that food down because if I don't, uh, if I don't do anything there, then if you look at the bottom of this board here, oops, there we go, you can see that would be two discontents and two grave, uh, grave deal uh, tokens to be flipped or whatever the consequences are from that. Is it two deaths? Not exactly. It's just one discontent. Oh, sorry, yeah. good part. Yeah. Uh, at this and this means how many people dies. Dies like this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Ah, okay. Uh, so that's only done. Now it's night phase, so everybody goes back, um, which is fine. So all these can go back up here. That worker token goes up there. So that's the end of day three, and I still haven't killed everybody yet. So this this is good. Um, yeah. yeah, that's one child. But yeah, just one child. I mean, you know, the, I, no, I, that's just wrong. Um, so <laughs> so place heated uh, place citizens in uh, in shelter. So I have at the moment four beds, I believe now. So that means I could... Oh, my poor children. I don't want them to go up. I'm going to have to, because I can't do any more on that. I can afford to get the engineers up. Uh, I can definitely afford to move the workers up. Um, but I don't want to cross that boundary. So, I've got four spaces. The two children are definitely going in there. One engineer and one worker. That means I move three sick workers and one sick engineer. Okay. One, two, three. There we go. So As you see, this is the new part, yeah. New part, yeah. But I couldn't move my child up, and I couldn't move the edge here. Yeah. Oh uh, no! It will be edgy, but yeah. <laughs> I'm good now. I'm going to move the engineer up, and I'm going to move the worker back. I don't want to activate this one just yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay um, and there we and go. And this was the night phase. That was the night phase done. Okay. Uh, and now we go to dawn phase. We're going to move that there. Is this classed as an event marker here? Then basically, do I have to do this again? Or? No, no, no. It uh, it just stay here uh, until you draw some dust. Card that they activate it when they find the thief or not, or yeah. something. Yeah, and that would be I'm taking it that's card D004. Then, so, uh, so yeah, so that's okay. There's nothing there on the event phase. Draw and resolve a morning card. So, we're back up here. That's one of these. Flip it over and let's see what it says. Some fight for offals. <laughs> Some citizens are fighting for food leftovers from the kitchen. Great. Set up guards at the kitchen to restore order. Uh, only if you have active justice, which I don't have. Uh, I have active care. Uh, keep some food for unfortunates. Only if you spend five food or increase your hunger by five. I don't get one hope. Or leave them as they are. We can't save everyone. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be quite thematic after you add 10 hunger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I'm kind of thinking maybe if they're hungry already, maybe I just go for more hunger here. Um, no, I'm going to leave them. Let's add card D0048 to the dust deck. Okay. okay yeah, I'll so let you do that. Last choice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's added reshuffle. We will see. We will see. Okay, uh, and actually generate a phase. So add sick based on the token. So here we go. Uh, and you can see... Oh, it's where this is, isn't it? Sorry. Yeah. So is that correct? So you have to, have to use that one because that one the there. highest token uh, yeah. activate all of them and this block all... Oh, below, anything below it. Yeah. So remind what that means there. I increase sickness by one for one or... Yes, exactly. One syringe always means... Add one to your sickness. And that's just for one worker, yeah? So I can choose whichever yes. one that is, yeah? There's only my workers could actually do that, okay? Um, so place malfunction cubes into the generator bag, and that is three going in because that's that yes, there. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so one, two, three, and then we roll the die, and it's the lowest number, and it's one. Only one. Nice. Which is good for now, but that means there are more tokens <laughs> left in the bag for later. Yeah. <laughs> what you give with That's one hand, good. what you give with one hand, Adam, you take away with another. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, and then reset the heat token position so that goes up there, back onto there. Guys, it's it's going all right. I'm I'm still not killing people so far, so this is not too many people. Uh, so now we draw a weather card. We go back over here. Okay, flip that and have a look. And the weather token moves one space towards my round marker. So here we go. And then we have those top two moved uh, one each again, but the bottom one stays where it is. So you can see that everything is starting to cost me more coal. 
Now, I have two hunt lodges now, I believe. Yep. So that means I will get four food, which I absolutely bloody well need at the moment. So that gives me four food. Not massive, but I'm getting there. Yep. Uh, and here we go. Expedition four. There's nobody on my expedition card, so nothing is happening there. Yes. Okay. Right. That was the um, weather phase done. Now, um, preparation phase. Resolve six citizen tokens. So go down here. Yeah, always start with the height. <laughs> yeah, of course. Why not? So the the meeple means what there, uh, Adam? Uh, I, add uh, one used uh, worker token. Add one used worker. So supply. Yeah, it will block one one worker because, you know, there is so many sick people that <laughs> uh, it affects your workforce. And then I... F oh, Right, so now I lose a person, is that correct? And I flip that back over yeah. and move that down. Yes, yep. you flip that, exactly. Uh, that, no, no, it uh, don't go uh, back. It's because, just that without uh, that. Yeah, you only move that sick. one. And then, uh, but I increase it by one. one. There we go. Yeah. And of course, because of dying, uh, you have to uh, draw body token. Oh, yes. Another one. Yes, there we go. So that's one of these here. Let's, let's flip that over. Oh, oh. So, it's I'm okay. okay. I'm okay. Because the top yeah. actions you say top action oops top actions are worker and um uh, um uh, engineer and the bottom action is if it was a dead child. Oh god. Uh and it wasn't exactly. either of those. So that's okay. That's good. Yeah. But if I get you all know, the... if I kill too many people, if I place that last token, that's game over, isn't it, up there basically. So yeah, I've yeah, got to be after careful. That, if yeah. you cannot place any any other token. But now let's go to engineers because it's not. Yeah. So he flips that. It's fun. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. So, so it flips again. Yeah, it flips again, but that moves down by one. That moves to there. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And, and it means you have to draw another. And a body yeah, token. Cause... Yeah. Okay. And let's hope. Oh, okay. So it's a top action. It's a minus one hope. So, if I go down to my hope, where well, is down here? So, can I get rid of a token or is, yes? Yeah, yeah. Yes, you can rid of this one. Yeah. There we go. I will and do of that. course, this that goes one. here. Yeah. Yeah. And if I get rid of that last token, that is also game over there. So that is very, very difficult. Yeah. So that's those two yeah. tokens done, and then it's the child which is moving forward one. I can't. So I. So we flip. Flip. Yeah. Yeah. But that's all that happens at this stage, is that right? Yeah. Or... Uh, exactly. Now yeah. you have to only to uh, update your uh, meeple's, meeples numbers. Because but nothing. Yeah, nothing is. You lose. Uh, I already you lost lose one child. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I'd, uh, I'd already lost that child before, hadn't I? Uh, yes, but this is the update moment. You oh. lose it uh, at the end of the. Uh, last round so when you update it now in preparation phase uh, you have to reduce your meeple to the numbers you see or add some meeples sometimes if you yeah. add new, uh, new people oh I see right okay so this child yeah. has to go uh, just oh, wherever. oh yeah, yeah here on the yeah. on the back yeah, oops missed it okay okay oh, me <laughs> right okay yeah of course Okay, and that's that bit done there. Uh, we've done the weather card, done the preparation phase, and now it's back to action phase. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I have to move a worker onto there. Exactly. I'm going to explore... Uh, the bottom, uh, the bottom yeah. space. Sorry, this the bottom is space. This why, you know, you don't go... Uh, just after the A, you must yeah. go the same, part of the same road. It's... Yeah. Faster because you know the uh, or you know it. But oh, how wonderfully thematic that is! Thing. That's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> okay, uh, what else? I need to get some food. Um, we know I need food. Um, I've got hunt lodges. There's one. So let's place a engineer uh, onto a hunt lodge and increase my food by five. Yeah, it's important. So that was on that was on four, wasn't it? So that's nine. Yes. Uh, uh, I potentially need some coal, so I'm going to use a child to get. Yeah, but uh, please use the. Oh coal god, I've got to use a coal before that, haven't I? Yeah. 
yeah, otherwise these are, yeah, forget that action. So I should have done that before I placed my engineer. This one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Always remember, people, place your coal. So I have to do one, two, three, four, five. How much coal have I got? Five. Oh, that's good. And that will at least get my onto there. Exactly. That's good. So I, I don't and to... now, now it's good. Yeah, it's okay. That's okay. Now I can get a bit more coal. I could, yeah. That gets me one coal, but if I put them there, that's two coal, but I also get a coal in the wood. So let's do this. We'll get one wood and one coal. That's the only resources they can get there, isn't it? Yep, that's okay. Yes. Ooh, okay. Um, do I want more food? Got another hunt lodge. Yeah, I'm going to get more food. Yeah, of course, on Hunting Lodge you can send uh, workers, yeah? There workers no as well, yeah. There's no icon, so maybe... Yeah, yeah, I suppose so, yeah. Because uh, the, the engineers can go anywhere. It doesn't really matter who goes, yeah. uh, where the workers go there. So, yeah. Okay. Let's get another five food, because we need this. That's 14. Still not enough, but there we go. Right, maybe I can build and stop people getting sick. Um... Mm. Yeah. No, I'm going to gather some more resources so I can then build a little bit more, I think. So I shall put my worker over here. Get. You have sawmill, remember? It oh, is, I do uh, have sawmill. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. More efficient so that gets rid of a tree there. Uh, I forgot about that. And that gets me three wood. Yeah. There we go. Um, and now I want a build action. So here we go. I want to build. And maybe want to build a bunkhouse. I've got to build two yeah, bunkhouses to hit that. So you can, yeah, you can build two of them. Uh, that's one there, and that was three. Yeah, let's let's achieve my time. Let's let's achieve it. Let's do it. Let's build another bunkhouse. Let's start. There we go. And yeah, that's the final three right. wood done. Oh man! And what that mean you have fulfilled that objective? So okay. Only thing you need is to survive uh, to the moment when the storm the storm hits settlement because. Uh, the short scenario ends with the first storm. This is the yeah. um, last round. Uh, this will be the last round when uh, this token goes to Go the same place. Yeah. So we will see if you can survive. It's yeah, let's close. see. It's, it, yeah, it's close. So that's my action phase done. Let's draw and resolve a dust card. So here we go. And this is, oh, the inevitable. Each grave deal citizen dies, and one citizen gets sick for every body token that you have. I have three. So each grave deal yeah, citizen but first go kill the citizens. Exactly. Yeah. So sick child flip. Move that down there. That means that moves to there. And I have to draw a body token. And to. you have to draw a body token, exactly. Which doesn't give me great for the next... Uh, um, okay, and I have bad information yeah. for you. I've lost the game, haven't I? <laughs> yes. So, if you yes. look here, guys, you can see that I... Uh, because it was a child that died, there is minus two hope. If we go down to my hope, down here, I can flip that over for minus one, but then I have to discard that token into there... And that means, looking at that, because I have no hope tokens left, Adam Kupinski, like happens with every single one of your games, I die a horrible, horrible death. <laughs> oh, but it was close. You have fulfilled your objectives. <laughs> yes, I fulfilled my objectives. And I'm sure that there are people who are going to be watching this and screaming at the screen to say, oh my God, why did you not do this? Or why did you not do that? That was... Fantastic! Do you know what I? Um, uh, you know, I, I played the uh, the game on the PC quite a few times, and I know it handles a lot of the kind of mechanisms for you. 
I actually prefer this. I like the fact that this doesn't have steel in it as a resource because that could be uh, too much. I really like the physical aspects of moving around the board as well. That was brilliant. That was genuinely, genuinely fantastic. I felt like I was close. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was. And uh, it was uh, fun watching you uh, you're playing from my perspective because uh, truly uh, you've done some... Uh, good choices and you solve some problems uh, when you were playing. Uh, I think just, you know, uh, forgetting about uh, sickness or maybe the hope level yeah. is enough. It will be enough to uh, pump it a little. Uh, but yeah, it was first play and uh, I think the next round can be the last one because uh, the storm can move up to two spaces. So. It yep. was really close. Sh should we see? Should we see? Should we flip the card yeah. and just see? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it is one space. No, so it would have been yeah, two rounds. Two rounds it would have been. <laughs> that was you know, and I think you know one of the things that we um, we talk about, or you you kind of warned me, not warned me about, but spoke about, was the number of how it looks like there's lots of actions, but they go and they flow so very very nicely together it feels you know uh, you know once you i think once you've had a full playthrough of the game you pretty much got everything down you you know where to move on the board and, and what to do and it becomes quite quite good second nature um yeah i i thoroughly enjoyed that i want to play more of that and as you can see as a solo game that really really absolutely works now i take it um it, it's cooperative as well yeah the, the game isn't it yeah, it's cooperative and, uh, you know, the uh, main thing that uh, changed when you play uh, cooperation here, it's that uh, here you can see some uh, uh, charts, help cards for each role. Okay. Like, for example, uh, without that, this is a three player's role. So, right. Uh, it do doesn't change the uh, flow of the game, uh, but uh, each person uh, will uh, will control some part of the game for example uh, if you have a generator and supply advisor this guy will control uh, this board okay so any other people don't uh, have to think with uh, each particular rule how yep. it works yep. it's especially important with the uh, first and second uh, second play uh, but when we talk about action uh, phase each player uh, put uh, one meeple by one by one. Right. So, okay. You know, if you see that uh, you you are controlling the generator, uh, so probably you see that you need more coal because uh, this is your problem. For example, in your round, yeah, the last yep. meeple, somebody uh, can take. Oh no, we have to gather coal because we have one, and next round it will be quite terrible to. Uh, don't have any call yeah and so on so uh it's uh it's not uh you know semi cop or something like this uh what what it will that add to to the game is the learning curve uh and uh, uh you know managing uh all the stuff yeah and of course the discussion because as you see uh part of uh, jesse recording the five hours was uh, in, uh, I think there was about two hours of talking. Of talking about it, yeah. Video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying to decide what was the best action to take. And I think that's a great part about it. As, uh, and you could say the same about kind of this war of mine. And I know, you know, that he shares a similar DNA. Is that there is um, yeah. a really good cooperative game there. And that, that comes down to the decision space that you're, you're collectively discussing as a group. But also as a solo game it really shines as well. You know, you feel the pressure of doing all this work on your own and just having to make these crucial, crucial decisions on your own. I think that, you know, it, it shines. You can see that it's going to be absolutely fantastic whether you play it as solo or whether you play it with more people. Happy, happy. Do you like this? You know, this war of mine uh, is very important game. Uh, when Michal, Michal Orach and... Uh, Jakub, who, uh, who is CEO of uh, yeah. uh, Glass Cannon Unplugged, create this War of Mine. Uh, it was probably the first board game with so uh, a hard team, so serious team. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we uh, uh, 
uh, I think we use, uh, as you say, part of its DNA. Of course, this war of mine is more about small group of people. So, yeah. uh, it's more adventurous than this. This is more, uh, probably more Euro style in this part. Yeah. yeah. When you're sending a meeple, it's, uh, it's really optimal, optimization game in this, uh, this part, but we still have the same, uh, a uh, part with hard moral choices. We try to introduce that in the, uh, especially in the Dusk deck, because yeah. uh, this is what uh, hits you in this game yes. after uh, after your decision. As you see with the, uh, for example, child labor. Yeah, this yeah. was uh, literally that was was uh, this was what kills you uh, in this game. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, you know, everything uh, in the game, and I know the artwork is still developing. I know the uh, the generator board has changed since the earlier kind of tabletop simulator playthrough, so the artwork on that's changed. But when I look at the back, uh, the artwork on, on the back here, I know it, it links back to the uh, the computer game. I just think it all yeah. looks absolutely fantastic. It feels really, really, really thematic. Um, you know, we've got the the kind of barren wastelands and these 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 exploration tiles that you put down as, as plain white tiles. Uh, because you're, you, you're kind of sifting through the snow to find out what's underneath them. Um, and I think that's that's great as well. In fact, let me just have a look at a B tile, because it's something we never got to yeah. place was a B tile. So let's let's stick that down in there. And what would I have got? There we go. Oh, it's Steam Core. Steam yeah. Core, yeah. And what do Steam Cores do? Do they allow uh, do you use them as any resource? or? Uh, yeah, you use them to upgrade buildings. Oh, great. Uh, Sorry, that's right. Yeah, They can be, yeah, they can be very... Uh, very powerful. For example, if you upgrade uh, Hunter's Hat, because we see uh, before Matt post, uh, yep. Hunter's Hat gives you plus eight, eight food. food. Wow! So it's close to the double. Uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, it it make a difference, uh, especially in uh, in full game. In short scenario, probably you can uh, uh, you can. Uh, you know, fulfill our objective and survive without using that. Yeah. Uh, but in full game, it's uh, Steam cores are very, very important resource. Absolutely. And you can build in factory, you can build automatons that gives you additional actions and don't get sick. And as you see, yeah. uh, somebody who don't get sick is very good uh, in that game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but, you know, where's the factory up here? It is... Um, what am I looking there? So, here. yeah. Yeah, but you need Steam Core to get the automaton, uh, the automaton or whatever. Uh, and, yeah, so getting Steam Cores becomes... Exposing those B tiles becomes more and more important, doesn't it? You have to then start yeah. thinking about spreading out more. You know, my focus in this game was more about feeding people and potentially hunting, well, getting these objectives fulfilled, certainly, and potentially exploring the landscape. But, um, but yeah, uh, you can see there are so many different interconnecting strategies. And would you say that in the scenarios that you've played, there's one strategy that works for all, everything, or, um, uh... Uh, no, no. You, it's uh, it's very very different each uh, each time. Even even here where we where we play a short scenario and without uh, you know starting card with different uh, number of uh, people, for example. But yep. this in long scenario is very important because sometimes, for example, you uh, start with a couple of uh, sick childs and uh, sick children and workers. Yep, but you have, uh, for example, automaton. Yeah, uh, from the start. Uh, different time you have uh, no wood and starting without it. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this is the the one uh, one thing, and of course all uh, all different things uh, you see the additional laws you uh, randomly uh, place before the full game. Yeah. Additional technology. And of course, placing of the tiles because yeah. the starting resource you see on on the board are quite important. Yep. And this is only in uh, you know in one scenario. So even uh, even if you uh, uh, you think that you find some good strategy, it uh, has to be uh, uh, you have to adapt uh, uh, to this. And even with that. Uh, Different people play different strategies. For me, for example, now I uh, 
I more like uh, to introduce child shelter law, right? Okay. Child labor, yeah. Yeah. And this, the uh, second uh, guy from the Glasgow Unplugged, who uh, who is uh, uh, lead developer of that uh, game, each time use child labor, <laughs> and we both can win that game. There we go. Yeah. Different uh, it, different, different. Uh, styles. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, there is lots of strategy. And there will there will be a couple of uh, setups with different shape of uh, uh, what you get here yep. uh, on Kickstarter, and there will be also different scenarios because you remember that in video game you have uh, uh, different scenarios, yeah, G arcs and so on. Yep, absolutely. So here in board game, uh, we cannot say which one yet because we will show that uh, on Kickstarter. Kickstarter, of course. But yeah. uh, you will find some uh, some scenario you know from the video game, and probably some that are totally new. Yeah, uh, and that's our uh, our uh, our uh, creative work. So, yes. so much to look forward be, to. Uh, quite a lot to to yeah. play. Yeah. I think you know it's a game that you can well certainly on the on the kind of game in a, a little bit that I've had with you tonight. I think it's a game you know when it when I get it when the Kickstarter fulfills, I'm so looking forward to getting this out on the table. I can see it being a game that I will want to get to the table a lot because I just enjoy this kind of decision space. Although I'm useless at it and rubbish at it, um, I, I really enjoy kind of uh, managing those kind of decisions. So that was absolutely fantastic. And Adam, thank you very very much for. Uh, for, first of all, showing me the game uh, and for allowing me to play through this kind of solo scenario, this introductory scenario. I think that's really, really useful. And uh, and I'm just blown away by just how easy it is to play once you get used to the play, but how difficult it is to master. Yeah, th thank you very much. It was, uh, as I said, fun to uh, show you the game and to watch how you, uh, how you play it. Because yeah. this is... Uh, I see probably about uh, 20 people playing it. Yep. But each time it's uh, it's something new. Yep. There are some patterns, of course, but uh, each each uh, of that person focus on something else. Yeah. Yep. So uh, uh, and I think the second time you you play that short scenario, you you will beat it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it lo it looks like this. <laughs> You say that I will forget. I will forget it by the next time I play it, and uh, I'll start making the same mistakes all over again. Brilliant. Okay. Wow. Thank you very much for allowing me to play that, uh, Adam. That was just amazing that was absolutely fantastic it totally exceeded any expectations i had about the game whatsoever yeah you I, didn't die in the round first so yeah yeah that's yeah. good that's it was good. close it was, yeah it was close actually i could see that you know the more that i played that intro the more i could play that introductory scenario i can certainly start to see winning strategies coming out at the back end of that as well but that makes me really eager to start getting into the bigger scenarios as and when the game is released yeah. so um let's talk about the kickstarter the Kickstarter is on October the 6th. Uh, yes. it's, I think it's going to be a big one. I think there's a lot of buzz behind this game. And how, do you know how is it running for 21, 22 days, something like that? Do you know? Or? Uh, yeah, it will be uh, definitely more than 20 days. I'm yeah. not sure which number exactly because it's. Uh, I think they, uh, they are still uh, deciding about uh, okay. one day uh, yeah. plus, minus one day. But uh, more than 20 days uh, for sure. That's, Good. That's what can I tell. And what can we expect? Can you give us any, any kind of insight into stretch goals and things like that? Or uh, You know what? There will be, uh, for sure, there will be uh, more scenarios. Yeah, this is what, uh, what we want to introduce. Uh, uh, so uh, if we're talking about the gameplay, so this will be more scenarios and more... Uh, more content. Uh, if we talk about, uh, for example, laws and technology uh, you will have in the game, and each game you draw just a couple of them, yeah. uh, we want to, uh, uh, to get bigger numbers because this will uh, rise the replayability of, uh, of the game uh, and don't make it more complex. So yeah. this is what, what we are aiming for. 
uh, of course, the uh, the scenarios and uh, what we uh, call now setups, because uh, there will be different style of uh, uh, putting the the board at the start of the game. Uh, uh, people know it from the video game, so uh, you know we uh, we can have uh, different type of tiles. For example, we have some uh, places that are. Uh, harder to get, yep. uh, or something like this. And of course, as I said, different scenarios. Uh, uh, part of them from the video game, uh, part of them uh, uh, totally fresh because uh, yep. we want to add something, uh, uh, something more for uh, for the game. And not each uh, video game scenario uh, is so easy to put into the board game while of course, one yeah. by one. So yeah. So yeah, this will be this will be creative creative work to uh, to make uh, make it happen, uh, give people uh, more uh, more different uh, different scenarios and different uh, story to tell. Yeah, which I think is really interesting. You can see that you know there's there's plenty of story to tell. It's almost infinitely expandable as well, depending on obviously how successful the game is. You can see that this has a an ongoing amount of expansions coming for it in future phases, etc. And I really, really hope that you know the game is the success it deserves to be because on that playthrough and on on the bit I played before, um, you know, I I can see it spending a lot of time at my table and a lot of people's table, both solo. And multiplayer as well, and I think when people start to see what uh, Jakob's done with the uh, with the generator, with the 3D generator, and how that's going to work, uh, it's going to be such a fantastic addition to the game. Really thematic addition, because you know we add something more to the generator, but uh, I think I'm not allowed. You're not allowed to, to say, you, but, <laughs> but we will a little expand what uh, Shogun on Amerigo do with that uh, that piece. We will add something more mechanical. Topic, okay. So. Oh, you heard it here first, folks. There is more to come on the generator there, and I think that's going to be fantastic. So that is the solo playthrough of the introductory scenario for Frostpunk. As you can see, uh, once you get past all the kind of talking and interaction and help from uh, that I got from Adam, you could probably uh, do that in round about an hour, and then the big game is ready for you then, and then you can play that even more. So that's Frostpunk coming from Glass Cannon Games, designed by Adam Kwapinski, and it comes to Kickstarter on the 6th of October. So please go to the Kickstarter site, or go and find out if you can register when you can register early. Register your interest, because this really isn't a game that you're going to want to miss. <laughs> So, Adam, thank you very much, Mark. I know you hinted at this when I interviewed you for uh, for Nemesis Lockdown. You said there was another big IP coming through, and uh, and then when you told me what it was, this was very exciting. What's next? Are, are you got any more surprises up your sleeve? <laughs> are you going to take a holiday? Uh, you know, there uh, there is a, a game with uh, board and dice. I'm uh, I'm making, or maybe they are. Now making the uh, last uh, polishing. Uh, okay. It will be released next year. Uh, Euro city building uh, game with dices. So uh, okay, uh, something uh, something that uh, fits their port portfolio. But yep. uh, for me, it will be uh, probably biggest Euro game I I ever made. Uh, and Borden uh, Dice, the Borden Dice do kind of the, uh, the Tekenu that's just come out and um, Teotihuacan, don't yeah, we? So it's that exactly. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, great. And, yeah. and that... so, so it will be a similar type of game. Uh, there will be also a very small game, very close to the uh, Frostpunk, because the Kickstarter with uh, Awaken Realms Light, the okay. smaller company of Awaken yep. Realms, yep. Uh, will start in the middle of October. Uh, and it will be short campaign uh, with a small game that uh, I try to catch, uh, you know, the uh, video fighting games to the board. So, okay. uh, small game, fast game with some uh, dexterity aspect. If uh, if somebody wants to use that uh, that mechanic, I think it uh, it be uh, be very fun. But totally different than Frostpunk, you know. Of course, that yeah. game is 15, <laughs> uh, 15 minutes, maybe twenty. Yeah. Uh, uh, here it's uh, it's more complex. It's literally. a little bit longer. It's a little bit longer. So, <laughs> yeah. Look, uh, Adam. Once again, uh, this is obviously the second time I've, I've uh, we've kind of been on camera together. It's always a pleasure uh, speaking to you. Always a pleasure 
getting a little bit further into your mind and understanding how that works and just realizing that you know there is a wealth of opportunity that uh, the board gamers haven't even tapped into yet within your mind there so excited about frostpunk obviously nemesis uh, lockdown uh, as as successfully funded and that gets yeah. fulfilled next year frostpunk will successfully fund i can almost guarantee i can absolutely guarantee that uh, and uh, it deserves to as well many many congratulations on yet again just another wonderful thanks. game thanks mark and i hope uh, there, there will be uh, more games that i can show you and uh, we can uh, we can both show uh, to people how how they work because, yeah, abs uh, absolutely you know, there is still a couple of prototypes in my uh, <laughs> closet so <laughs> well now i know how to use tabletop simulator you know, and you know where i am i'm only at the end of the phone just let me know and i'm more than happy to, to kind of play test them for you great okay. great excellent thank you once again uh, that's adam kupinski designer of frostpunk uh, by glass cannon studios coming to kickstarter on the 6th of october this has been not board gaming my name's mark <laughs> until next time bye bye Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye.